Okay, students, I think it might be helpful if I continue to do this making a video of kind of walking through the notes. Again, this next topic kind of is a play off of the completing the square. So, or I'm sorry, the perfect square trinomial. So we're going to be completing the square to solve. Now, this is another method to solve a quadratic equation. That's why we learn it. So the understanding of it, it actually works pretty good. It's not too... Um, Hard and it helps you solve the kind of equations we were solving that come out with whole number answers or what's called rational answers where they are fractions. But also helps you solve the ones that don't come out to nice fractions that have square roots in them. And we'll kind of talk about that uh, later in, on some of the examples. So under, unlike the factory method, you can see completer, completing the square helps you um, solve quadratics that don't have rational solutions right down here. So a rational solution, remember, it would be a whole number or a fraction. So how does that work? Well, the method itself is pretty simple. Now, it works best when the middle term is an even number. So when this is even, that's when it works best. When it's not even, it's a little more difficult because now you're using um, numbers that are halves and then you're squaring them and whatnot, and so it becomes a little bit more laborious. So today and the next lesson, you're only talking about where the middle is even. All the examples in your assignment should have even numbers there. You'll notice this kind of talks through it. Step number one, you're moving the linear term, uh, that would be this term here, you're moving it to the other side of the equation. You're trying to get rid of it so you're only left with the quadratic term and the linear term. The constant term, I said that wrong, the constant term should go to the other side. You can see now that you would be creating one of these perfect squares. So how do we do that again? If you remember on the last lesson, you're taking half of this, so divide that by 2, you get 6, and then you square that number, and that gives you 36. So that's where those come from. Now, whatever you do to one side in an equation, you got to do to the other to keep the balance. Okay, and that's what it says here. Add that same value. So if we're adding 36, why are we doing that? Well, we're creating a perfect square trinomial here, but on the other side, we're getting... Uh, two numbers added together, and we end up with 25, which in this case makes this one a little easier to solve because the square root of 25 is an easy number. All right? Why do we do that? Look down here. Now we can factor this because we know perfect square trinomials. They come out to something like this where you get, it would look, uh, if we did the x method, you get x plus 6 and x plus 6, which we can write like this. Well, why would we even want that? Well, when you square root both sides, if you look over here, I'm going to kind of draw in the square root where it should be. If I square root this and this, these just cancel each other out, the square root and the square root. And I'm just left with x plus 6. Well, I can solve that. I've solved that since I was in 6th, 7th grade, right? Well, the other side does come out with two solutions, though. You have a positive 5 and a negative 5, and you can see down here, I solve two different equations, so I get two different solutions. That's an example where it comes out to a rational solution, right? I get a whole number answer. All right, what do I do when I don't come out with whole numbers? What does that look like? Well, that's right here. So what happens when I, when I don't get perfect squares in the end? So you can see these. the work has already been done. We're at to the point where we factored our... Uh, perfect square into a perfect square trinomial into the binomial factor here. This is, none of these will be on the lesson today, but I threw it in here just so you can see how it looks on both. So on this side, <coughs> when I take the square to both sides, well, the square root of 7 is not a nice number. So I'm going to leave it as plus minus square root of 7. I'm just going to, I'm not going to, I could work that decimal out, but remember it's a long repeating uh, non-repeating, non-terminating decimals. So you can see on this side, I've written both. Now, another way to do it, 
uh, I've done on some homework today on some different people that have already gotten to this point is you could actually just say, leave it as x equals negative 5 plus or minus square root of 7. Notice I didn't work that out. All I did is move the 5 over. That's where you get the negative 5. Plus and minus square root of 7, well, that came from way up here. I didn't change it. So both acceptable answers, some students like to combine their answer into the, the type like this one here. So you could do either one. Now on the other side, you can see it's a little bit more. Um, the 24 over here, you can see I'm breaking the 24 apart and I've kind of got a mess. But this technically should be on the next lesson because none of your, I erased all the ones from the homework that have anything like this. So the next lesson will cover this and I have a whole other small set of notes on these type. And the last one is um, how to complete the square using the, uh, to figure out how many solutions a quadratic has. So when you're wanting to find solutions, the nice thing is you don't have to actually go through the whole process. You're just wanting to find how many solutions it has. So you're basically saying, if I get this and I figure out this number and add it over here, if I get a positive number, I know I'm going to have two solutions. Here, when I added this to both sides, this came out to zero, right? Negative 121 and positive 121, that equals zero. If I get that, I know I'm going to get one solution. And down here, I am adding 9 to both sides, right? Well, that's going to come out to a negative 18. If I get a negative number, I know I have no solutions. Eventually, we'll explain that no solutions. But for right now, we're just going to say we have no real solutions. They're not numbers we understand or know. Hopefully this helps you kind of go through the notes. I'm going to show a couple other examples from the homework on another video, and that might help you do the homework.